Hello there. I didn't see you come in. If you're watching this, chances are you've seen a couple of my amazing rhythm game videos. And if for some reason you haven't, then you've clearly been missing out. Right, guys? Obviously! Now, a question I find myself being asked all the time across every single one of my videos is... How do you record yourself and your screen at the same time? So, you know, I figured I would just, you know, walk through with you guys the exact same processes I use to make these videos on a damn near, what, monthly basis now? Now, but first we're gonna need a couple of things. Now the very first thing you're definitely gonna want to have is one of these, your very own real guitar. You can use any guitar so long as it has a 1 forward slash 4 quotation mark port to plug this into and you'll be good to go. Although I guess if you want to get really technical you're probably gonna need one of these to actually play the damn thing. Yeah. Next up you're gonna need one of these, an actual copy of the game. Or alternatively you could use this one. Or if you're one of those guys, you'll probably use this one, you silly bastards. Now the thing that a lot of people tend to get really tripped up on is the fact that you actually need a camera to record yourself. I mean, who would have ever guessed that such an obscure method of capturing a live medium would be so difficult? I mean, if you're a cheap ass, I guess you could use like a webcam or your phone. But seriously, don't be that guy. Please. Now if you're looking to make some really high quality stuff, you're gonna need either one of these or one of these, or one of the, uh, what? Wait, what, wait, uh, what? In disclaimer, I do not fully endorse the Hop Hog product, so here are some other fine, superior options which may better suit your video recording needs over the few I happen to mention. Just saying! However, if you want to be unique and super fancy, you could actually use a second camera to record your screen. Now that'd be awesome. So now that you have those pesky bare necessities required to make these videos out of the way, it's time to actually record. Make sure you've tested everything and that all is running smoothly. Your camera's juiced up, your recordings aren't failing, and so on. When setting your camera up, make sure as much of you is in the frame as possible. Believe me, it's far better to have more room to work with as opposed to not having enough and being too close. Because remember, you're gonna have other shit there too. Also, I figured I should probably bring this up, but just make sure there's adequate lighting and that the settings on your camera are optimized for a well-lit room because believe me, the lighting makes all the difference in a video. And now that setup is finally finished, let's get to picking the song, shall we? Now for the sake of this particular video, I think we're gonna do something that sounds a little bit like rock and or roll. Uh, how about in the Garden of Eden? Yeah, that sounds pretty good. Load her up! You know, the more I sit on it, the more I think that the hardest part about this entire process is waiting for the damn game to load. I mean, look at it. <laughs> I mean, what, you just look at it. This is literally how long it takes every single time. I'm not even, I'm not even, I'm not even playing it up. This is... <laughs> anyway, once it's finally finished, make sure you tune up and that it doesn't sound like complete and utter horseshit and get to rocking out. Oh yeah! What, the three minutes? What do you mean I did badly on time? What about the other 14 minutes? And once you're all done, I guess we can get into the whole editing portion. <sighs> okay, so now that you have all of your footage recorded, it's time to put what you have on your camera on the computer. So, right here, there's this stupid Windows 8 thing popping up. Let's go get that footage off, shall we? So go find your footage and just go ahead and drag it somewhere you know where it will be, such as the desktop. That's just where I'm gonna put it. So that's easy to remember, obviously. Now you can use any kind of video editor you want, but you know, I kind of am a bit more familiar with Sony Vegas Pro, so we're gonna be using that. And to start things off, let's go ahead and take a look at the properties, shall we? Now, for the properties, these are my own personal preferences, and I feel that they are pretty adequate for everything, usually. So, if you take a look here, we've got our, you know, standard stuff. Make sure your field order is in none. Just make sure that's a thing. And then over here, we're going to want to make sure that this is off. If you have the view transform, make sure that's off. And then interpolate fields, Gaussian blur type, and that's pretty much good for videos. If it looks like that, you're fine. As for audio, just make it like the best it can be. It doesn't really matter. And the ruler and summary and audio nonsense, it doesn't even matter. Don't even, don't even worry about it. So those are those are my project properties, just in case you were wondering. And we'll do a little bit more with that later. Uh, I don't have a very powerful computer, so clearly it won't be able to run as quickly. So let's go find that footage, shall we? Here we are with me doing that nonsense. Unfortunately, I was able to get in a small enough file, so as it's building its peaks, let's go grab the other video, which is of the game. 
and it's right over here sorry for the clutter I don't really I have a lot of videos I record and leave on here after doing it so let's go over there we go okay so the first thing we're gonna want to do is to sync it up and basically you can do that with the audio uh, wavelengths there and you can kind of tell where it's a bit louder in some places so yes all right and you can just usually do it visually at first okay so it's a little bit off and it might be a good idea to lower the volume of the louder one so that it sounds a little bit equal and with that that sounds pretty close actually I think that's that's pretty good uh, visually they should sync up fairly well though with YouTube it does get a little bit off and you can't really do anything about that because YouTube is just meh. but anyway there we've got that alright so with that being said and done let's get the end point here and alright so let's see Right now, we can start dealing with the positioning now. And for the position, I have a bunch of preset ones for all my projects and whatever. Here, RS is for the Rocksmith, and this is typically where I like it. I like it to have it in the bottom right-hand corner, but you can put it wherever the hell you want because it's your video. I'm not going to tell you what you can and can't do because your name is not John Locke. Anyway, uh, now we got our masking here. Here, I've also got a bunch for my other projects, but here, for the RS, we've just got the typical just... You know, the masking basically will just cut out whatever you want to be shown there. Like, you can create your own mask super fast. Like, right here, look at it. It's just like, it doesn't take any time at all. You just put a bunch of little dots where you want it to be. And typically, when I do mask, you'll notice it looks kind of shitty right there. Go ahead and go to your feather options and then, you know, pump it up. Usually, I have it at 15 or 20, but, you know, it just kind of depends on whatever you want because it, it shows more without having that nasty solid edging at the end. So there's mine. It wasn't that much different from before, just 20 instead of 15. So there's that. That's the one I use for pretty much all my videos. And as for opacity, I typically have it at 65, since that seems to be a perfect kind of well-rounded number to remember. And with that, that's pretty much the basis of the video right there. I mean, we're not done. we still got a little bit of touch-ups to do. Let's go with the uh, background, shall we? The background of you, what you actually recorded. Now, same thing here. You can kind of just edit in this, like, you have right now you don't really have to worry about masking in this as much as more so the position you're more comfortable with and I guess that looks all right I mean this is why you kind of want more room so that you can kind of fiddle around with that extra space and around you know <laughs> okay so that's that's not too bad with that all having been said and done now we've got our video effects I use three primary ones the first of which is the brightness and contrasting now just kind of think of this as like the makeup to the video you don't want to put like an absurd amount to where it just looks stupid you kind of want it to complement the acts or <laughs> complement the video and more or less accent the kind of thing so you don't go overboard it's just it's just a small little thing I have preset ones for the actual gameplay depending on what your capture card is you might have to adjust these a little but I typically like having it a little bit darker so that when it's you know when it's transparent like this the actual notes show up a little bit clearer and you can also still kind of see the background so there's kind of that it doesn't really work for this video though now next we've also got the saturation adjust and for that you know I wouldn't really worry about going too all out on that it just kind of brings out the colors my camera isn't very good at you know producing high contrasting bright colors so I have to put it on that you don't have to worry about it too much on the video though unless it you know completely is just terrible and we've got sharpen Sharpen basically is what all next gen games implement these days in their games. It's just sharpening. And it kind of just, you know, brings out the lines a little bit better. Okay, so once that's done, alright, let's see. Now, the most important thing we're going to want to do here is to disable your resample. Now, something I'm going to show off here is uh, when you're looking at your best, and you'll notice that when you're looking at the still images, when it's like, okay, let's see, there's going to be parts where it seems blurry. Okay, so. Let's see if we can actually get a decent one here. Okay, you notice how the lines are blurry there, right? Well, you can that can be avoided. And to get rid of those, you go to switches and disable resample. I figured that out a while back, and it g completely gets rid of it. it. It has to be kind of the right kind of video for that, and that's kind of another another thing for another day. But you don't really have to worry too much about it. So there's that. If you've been having trouble with those stupid like blurry lines, that's pretty much your your problem solved for it but uh, as you guys can tell my computer really sucks at this as for audio typically I like going into the track EQ and then bringing up the gain and just kind of fiddling around with it and I typically do this on the game audio because it, it just works better that way for me yeah my computer sucks I apologize alright 
So there, that's uh, pretty much the video right there. Now we've got one last thing we're gonna do. Well, no, actually a couple last things we're gonna do actually. First of which is we're gonna be taking this screen and we're gonna go ahead and put on the top lyrics or whatever, lyrics and scoring. So right there, I just copied it. We're gonna go ahead and uh, do the exact same thing we did last time with the crop or yeah, with the masking and such, but now we're gonna do the scoring part. And same thing here, this one is kind of a screw up since I just made it way back in the day. But you just pretty much have to make a square around that little area. And it's really easy because there's actually a square option here that you can use to do that exact same process a lot easier. And same thing uh, with the, the feathering, I said the feathering. <laughs> and uh, you know, it's just, it's just more of a matter of preference on that matter. But make sure you get the lyrics in there because it's kind of pointless without that. I guess, not really. <laughs> okay, but I just like using my preferred method. And the same thing with the positioning here. I have my own preset one. You can just put it right at the top of the screen. And that's pretty much, that's the video right there. I'm pretty confident to say. Um, so not really much more to it, I guess. Um, you could just do little touch-ups like here at the end. And then you can see kind of, you know, where you want it to end. Okay, so it looks like... And a little, little cheeky thumbs up there, cheeky Elfie, and then have it end like that. Okay, I think that's actually not too bad, and then the ending, let's see, and it just ends, that's typically how I like, you don't always have to put the, the screen there unless you really feel like it. Okay, so now that all that is good, I think we're actually all set to go, so we'll set it to best just so that we know that it'll turn out in its best form regardless of anything, and we'll go head off into our render settings. This is also very important. Okay, so what I would highly recommend, this is just from personal experience, is you go to Sony AVC slash MVC, or at least one of these options, and pick the memory stick option. Just any one of these will do, okay? Customize the template, and for video format, change it to AVC. Now, a lot of this is already going to be done and ready for you. And so for the frame size, go ahead and put whatever you want. I put it at 1920 by 1080 because that's how I like to do it. And then profile can't change, can't change Quebec. Uh, frame rate, you can do whatever you want. I keep it at 29.9. Doesn't really matter. I guess it does matter, it's just not in this instant. Make sure the field order is always at none. That's just a personal thing I found. Um, now as for the bitrate, bitrate's a little bit tricky. The higher the number, the bigger the file size, except around 6 million. That's typically where the quality will top out for YouTube, but I usually like to keep it at 8 million just in case. And then audio, you don't have to worry about at all because it's all set up for you, unless you want to screw with some of the bitrate settings, but same thing, it's it's just, uh, it doesn't even matter. And make sure it's saving to MP4 also, that's what I found helps. And then for video rendering quality, just keep it at best just in case another precautionary measure and these things you don't even have to worry about. And that's pretty much all you have to do, you guys. Those are my settings, so we'll save it as woo. I just like, I do woo when I'm excited, like woohoo! You know, I don't know, I don't know. that sounded really stupid. But, um, so, okay, let's go take a look at these settings. So these are the settings I just did two seconds ago for you guys. If you guys take a look at that, you'll notice that the ones that I use on regular basis, exactly the same thing. And I'm not even, I'm not like, you know, trying to cheat. This is exactly how I'd go about making a video. I'm just commentating over me doing it. Huh. Okay, so there's that. Uh, let's go ahead and save this as a different file. In, uh, uh, I forgot the A, whatever. And there you go. This will probably take a little while, but hope you guys, hopefully you found a little bit of, I don't know, knowledge, information out of this little venture. And that you can find some ways to take what I've shown you here and apply it to other videos. Maybe to even improve your own. And like I said, it doesn't even have to be from this game. Whether it be from making other rhythm game videos split screen with guitar or drums, or making arguably enjoyable commentary while playing video games, or making shitty scare cam videos. Um, never mind. My name is Elsa Cruz. See you guys next time. <laughs>